morning, everyone, and welcome to Mind Speak. It's a great pleasure to see you all here. Um, today, it's a real pleasure to have uh, Pradeep um, Panrana uh, here at Mind Speak today. I remember that Pradeep, we started the Mind Speak journey many years ago. We were once in Westgate. Um, and I was remembering that time, Pradeep, and Pradeep said many things which I'm going to just mention briefly in a second. But thanks for supporting this. I, I was thinking of uh, where to look for a, a profile, and I found a very good one on Wikipedia. So let me just tell you what they said. Pradeep is a businessman, entrepreneur, industrialist, and philanthropist in Kenya, current managing director of Arm Cement Limited, which is the leading cement manufacturer now, isn't it, in East Africa, Pradeep? By tonnage, right? Yeah. Um, which is something to consider. Background, born in 1959, educated in Kenya, then attended the New York University Stern School of Business, graduating in 1983 with a degree, in, uh, in the, uh, degree of Master of Business Administration. 83 until 84, Pradeep worked at a software company in New York, earning $40,000. That was a lot of money then. A lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Wow. He returned to Kenya in 1984 at the age of 24 at the request of his father. And here, this is a really interesting story. Um, and Pradeep told us last time, and let me say it again, because it really, he, he gets back, if I remember correctly, and uh, Pradeep's father, Mazay Panrana, gives the keys of the business to Pradeep and says, you're in charge. And that was the, how it all started. And, and I think that was pretty remarkable, actually. Were you confident at that time, Pradeep? No, I actually, I, I came back and, and after a few weeks, I realized this was a very small business. Uh, so I told him, I said, I was making more, more in a salary than the profit of the company the whole year. So, so he was a bit disappointed with me. <laughs> so, so, so he had a bunch of keys in his, on, his, on his table, the car keys, or, and he slid them across the table and said, OK, let's see what you can do now. You know, so wow. So that was, uh, and here we are now. Yeah. Um, Pradeep became the MD of Arthi River Mining Limited, as the company was known at the time. Annual sales in 1984, $70,000, according to this report, Pradeep. 1984. Business has grown to annual sales of $160 million last year. In 1994, the company start, which, which had started with manufacturing fertilizer, um, agricultural line, and in fact, the fastest growing piece of this business is fertilizer now, when, and I'm sure Pradeep will mention that. Animal feed, ceramics, glass, and plastics began making cement for the first time. So that's 94. In 2007, the company changed names to Arm Cement Limited, listed its shares on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. What year was that? 97. Saba Saba, right? July. July. Pradeep describes, this is another fabulous, I, know, I'm not, I don't mean to steal his thunder, but he, the way, I can never forget it. He's IPOing, and he's saying that the IPO event was at the Hilton. And that was the same time as the riots broke out in Nairobi. And he was sort of having to duck tear gas to get in the hotel. W wasn't sure how many people were going to make it that day. And I was thinking to myself, it's been so volatile recently with the shilling, interest rates. But the king of volatility is surely Pradeep, because you don't get more volatile starts than that one. Um, Pradeep obviously is a big shareholder in, in, in Arm. So he's aligned with his shareholders. And I want to give a couple of shout outs, if you don't mind putting your hand up, because one of the earliest shareholders, I think, in, in your company. And I find you everywhere, so I'm really pleased to see you here again today. Thank you. Um, Pradeep is married. He's father of four. One of his, well, two of his daughters are in the audience. And, um, and he's also, of course, amongst many other things, the chairman of the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. And uh, uh, very keen on conservation. And uh, I think that little rhino pa passed away, didn't he, Pradeep? But we've adopted a second, second one now. One. Yes. Uh, because be funnily enough, they'd adopted a rhino, an orphaned rhino, Kilifi. Kilifi. And we actually saw Kilifi 
and he'd like to be tickled under his stomach, we discovered. <laughs> so it really, it's, it's a great pleasure. And let me just say some personal things. I think I've learned so much from Pradeep. You know, w w when Pradeep produces his reports, he's normally within a basis point of what he's predicting. And I've never seen that kind of uh, um, uh, attention uh, to a business plan. I've seen it in very few people. The only other person I've noticed it uh, to that degree is Joshua at KCB and Patrick Quarker, who knows the numbers inside out. And I really respect that quality. My mate Mr. H.J. Parana, Aaron Senate Minister, formerly at the River Mining, has grown tremendously, driven by the economic, infrastructure and development goals of the country. It has since expanded to Tanzania, Rwanda and South Africa to become one of East Africa's leading cement and industrial mineral manufacturers. We are essentially an industrial mineral mining company which processes the minerals into value-added products. Over the last 40 years, the only thing which has changed is that the degree of value addition has increased. We sincerely believe as a company that the Kenyan economy should be driven by value-added industries to create the employment opportunities for a young nation like us. We are a company whose revenue has grown 20 times in the last 15 years, profitability 30 times, and the market cap has grown 50 times. We have invested in capacity. We have invested in human resources development. We have invested in technology. And all of this has helped us to be one of the lowest cost manufacturers of our products in the region. It has helped us to be a market leader. The Tanzanian plant, in terms of capacity, is three times as big as the Kenyan plant. results into a 600,000 tons uh, per annum cement plant. The uh, Tanzanian plant is 4,500 tons per day. Stone, it is clay, it is shale, it is iron ore and oxide. Now all these minerals react at a temperature of 1400 degrees centigrade to produce Where ARM has invested is getting world class technology in a fully automated plant which can control the chemical reaction to precision and produce superior quality clinker and superior quality cement. We have post and pre order quality checks in our manufacturing system. We use internal laboratories to do the uh, internal controls, but we also use independent laboratories to establish that what is being done is correct and confirmed. What these independent laboratories do is that they uh, carry out tests on the chemical composition of the clinker, on the strength of the cement. They also do concrete mix designs and they also carry out tests on the workability of the cement. Now the results which we get from them confirm what we've already tested in our laboratory and the fact that we are producing a superior quality cement. This, this uh, short movie was made about a year and a half ago. Uh, we've since uh, changed our, our logo and our branding for the cement. And I'd just like to explain to you what, what the new logo, what the new uh, design uh, of, uh, means here. 
this is, uh, I hope everybody can see, this is a, a hammer crashing onto a cube, a concrete cube. The standard test of testing the strength of cement, or more particularly the strength of concrete, is done by, by mixing cement, sand and aggregate into very specific proportions and casting this into a cube 6 inches by 6 inches by 6 inches or 150 mm now uh, cube. This cube is then uh, cured in water for 2 days, three, uh, 7 days and 28 days and then crushed with a compressive uh, uh, machine and the crushing strength is determined when the cube actually breaks. So, you can design concrete for different types of strengths with, with, uh, uh, with different mixtures of sand, uh, aggregate and cement. Rhino cement outperforms almost all of the cements in the market for all the different types of strengths. And this is the only true test of knowing how good a cement is. Um, compressive strength of concrete can start from 10 megapascals or 10 newtons per millimeter squared going all the way up to 70 and even more uh, megapascals uh, per, cube, uh, per millimeter squared. And rhino cement performs well at each and every m combination of sand, aggregate and cement and gives a superior strength to, to, uh, uh, to, to other cements in the market. So this is a test we challenge our contractors and engineers to take. We have a service that we provide on the site. By law, contractors are obliged to, to keep samples of a cube tests uh, for, for cube tests to be carried out later on. And we, we go with our mobile laboratory to, to sites to, to carry out these tests. And it helps contractors to do the right proportioning, not to overuse the cement, not to underuse it, to get the right strength uh, and, and make their construction cost economical. So this is something uh, that we have recently started and this is what the, the new uh, logo, the brand means. Thank you. Just, just a few slides to, to uh, take you through the history of the company and the, the performance. As you all know now, the company was started in 1974. Uh, uh, we started manufacturing agriculture lime. Uh, this is mainly limestone containing calcium and magnesium. Uh, which is needed in, uh, uh, to reduce the soil acidity in, in agriculture farms around, around, around Nairobi mainly. In the 1980s, the company expanded into a variety of industrial minerals uh, such as felspar, barite, gypsum, mica and so on. These minerals were all processed and used for manufacturing uh, uh, paint, rubber, glass, ceramics, uh, animal feeds. PVC pipes and so on and these this is a business line that still continues under our industrial minerals business. In the 1990s we decided to go into cement manufacturing. We started with a small plant uh, 200 tons per day that was that came into production in, in the year 1996. Uh, in the in 2000s there was a lot of uh, regional diversification. We went into Tanzania set up a manufacturing plant in South Africa as well. We expanded our cement capacity. The first expansion took place in 2006. From 200 tons per day, we went up to 1,000 tons per day. Then every two years, we have been expanding since then. 2008, uh, we set up a grinding plant in, in Nairobi. 2010, uh, 2008, we doubled our capacity in Kaloleni. 2010, a grinding plant in Nairobi. 2012, another grinding plant in, in Dar es Salaam. 2014, we set up our largest plant in the region, of uh, the, the clinker grinding plant, clinker production plant in, in Tanga. And another couple of years from now, we are looking at uh, uh, another grinding plant at Tanga to utilize all the clinker that we produce there. The total capacity in the company now is 2.5 million tons. We produce half a million tons of clinker in Kaloleni, uh, 1.2 million tons a year of clinker in Tanga, that's 1.7, that 1.8, the total cement capacity translates into 2.5 million tons. This is between the grinding plants in Dar es Salaam, Nairobi and the two clinker plants 
as well as a small grinding plant that we acquired in, in uh, um, Kigali a couple of years ago. I use this slide uh, to, to, to talk about our success factors so far. I think we've got a very strong customer relationship management program in the company. We have, a, we have a full control of our value chain from mining limestone to conversion into clinker to conversion into, into, into cement, unlike many other companies who import uh, clinker, which is a major constituent of cement and the major de definer of the quality of the cement. We manage, we produce our own clinker and, and therefore control the entire value chain. Our plants run at a very, very high operational efficiency compared to many other plants in, in the region. We have a strong in-house capability of engineering. In fact, this is probably one of our strongest points. We are, man we are putting up our clinker plants at less than half the cost of m most of our competitors in, in the region. A typical cement plant, an integrated plant with from limestone mining to clinker production to cement costs about $200. $250 to $280 per ton of annual capacity. So if you have a million ton plant, that's about $280 million. We have just set up our Tanzanian plant with two separate <coughs> greenfield sites in Dar es Salaam and in Tanga, total capacity of 1.8 million tons at under $200 million. So we are doing, we're building plants with our own in-house engineering, in-house construction, in-house fabrication facilities much at a much lower cost than our competitors. This translates into a serious advantage which I will talk about a bit later on. Historical performance uh, from 2005 to, to 2015, uh, I've got the figures that we published for the first half of 2015. As you can see there's been uh, uh, quite a steady growth. In 2014 we had a, we had a marginal dip but 2015 on a half year basis, we are now back up again. Uh, and I will explain, I should let me show you a few more slides. Uh, on a cumulative average growth rate in the last 10 years, we have achieved nearly 22, 23% growth rate in, in, um, in turnover. Our fertilizer sales, as uh, Ali Khan mentioned, this year are growing at about 14%. Um, uh, and so, uh, it's total, total composition of the total turnover of uh, per volume of fertilizers is 14% and growing very rapidly. Cement remains the biggest portion of our business at, at about 86%. The historical EBITDA uh, numbers are, are also have also been growing. We half year we clocked just 1.94 billion shillings, and and uh, last year was uh, 3 billion total. So we are doing we are ahead of last year. Uh, the second half of this year has also been uh, uh, better. The last quarter particularly has seen uh, quite an improvement over, over the first two quarters of the year. Um, in, in until we started our clinker plant in Tanga, we were importing our clinker requirements for Tanzania and partly for Kenya. Now imported clinker is a lot more expensive than manufacturing it ourselves here. Therefore our margin was a little lower than what it is now with our own clinker manufacturing. This is, is a turning point on, on the, on the uh, margin uh, that we make on, on our sales. If you look at the comparison of our margins com with, with, uh, um, with other cement companies in the region, Except for uh, the companies in West Africa and Nigeria particularly which are earning a very, very high margin because of a variety of protectionist measures and, and very high local market prices. All the others are uh, in the region of about under 30%. Uh, in 2013, ARM's margin was 22%. With our own clinker now, it has gone up to 28, 29%. Uh, and that 22% was a combination of local production and imported clinker production. <coughs> Profit before tax. Uh, last year, 2014, we, we, we hit profit before tax was just over 2 billion shillings. Um, the first half of this year we've had a negative profit with nearly 1.4 billion shillings in, um, in, in unrealized foreign exchange losses. But without the foreign, unrealized foreign exchange losses, 
the profit uh, at half year stood at more than 860 million shillings. And after tax profit, last year was 1 point, nearly 1.5 billion. Uh, this year, because of the exchange losses, uh, it will be a loss. But if we remove the unrealized exchange losses, we are ahead of last year. Our dividend, uh, our, our earnings per share has dipped a little bit. Without This is without the unrealized foreign exchange losses because we have a lot more interest payable uh, on our capex which until last year was being capitalized. So the earnings per share uh, uh, on, on, on the 2015 figures is about 2.7 shillings a share. Our dividend uh, for the moment has remained at 60 cents a share. Total assets, 36 billion, uh, nearly 37 billion. Now this is a very important number. Uh, this is on the, exp uh, on the, this is much higher figure than the current market capitalization. Uh, a replacement cost of the assets is at least uh, 500 million dollars, uh, whereas the market capitalization today is, is half that number. So there is a significance in, in, in what the, the value of the company is vis-a-vis -vis the share price at the moment. ARM was one of the first companies in, in manufacturing companies in Kenya to, to start credit rating way back in the year 2002. And since 2004, we have maintained uh, a credit rating right up to 2015, which is not included in this slide, uh, A for long term and, and um, A1 for short term. These are both investment grade credit ratings uh, and, and we've been very proud that we have managed uh, to maintain the same rating uh, for, with, with all the expansion that we have done over the years. Market capitalization, I mentioned that, it has dropped $281 million uh, as at now. Uh, uh, at peak, it was at $500 million. As you noticed the slide before, the assets at historical cost are more than the market cap now, and replacement cost is nearly $500 million. It's, sorry, what, what, what did we say? The, what, what, did, what did you say the um, asset value was? Just under 39 billion. 39 billion, yeah. This is a slide I haven't uh, uh, looked at for a long time, but uh, we, we added, added a few numbers for, for today's presentation. Um, this shows the share price performance from 1997 up to, up to this week. Uh, the IPO was at 12 shillings a share, and uh, in 19 and in September of uh, 2012, we uh, did a five, uh, 501 split. So this share price is assuming that there was no split. So a 12 shilling share issued in 1997 went all the way up to 434 shillings. Today it is at 200. Um, on a cumulative average growth rate from 1997, we have achieved an 18% return at today's price of 200. Had this measure done, been taken place four months ago, when we were still at about the current price of 95, 94 shillings multiplied by five, it would have been nearly 40% uh, uh, cumulative average growth rate. Had you invested in the company even 10 years ago, you would have had a, uh, a 20 times return. Had you invested in the company five years ago, it would have been a 6x return at today's prices. I just want to go through a few uh, highlights in, in this chart. Uh, IPO took place in 1997. We sold 19.8% uh, uh, of, of our company equity to, to Bamburi Cement for for 2.5 million dollars, so it was at the time 10, 10 uh, shillings a share, and this is when the share price had fallen to four shillings a share from the original IPO price of 10. So we did our first equity raise from Bamburi Cement at a premium. At the time that the price was four shillings, Bamburi paid us 10 shillings a share. Um, the share price moved up to 15 shillings when we took a decision in 2004 to, 
to increase capacity at Kaloleni. Uh, we, were, we, we, we had a tiny plant, 200 tons per day, and we increased the size of the plant to 750 tons per day. The share price started increasing as we saw more and more revenues from our new plant, especially in 2006 when it was commissioned. Um, in in uh, 2009, Bamburi exited the, the company at, uh, at a price of 97 shillings a share. And remember they had come in at 10 shillings a share um, in, in, uh, in the year 2000. So it was a very significant return for Bamburi over a period of eight or eight and a half years. The uh, uh, share price uh, in 2011 dropped a little bit. This is the time when we had uh, a spike in interest rates and, and a devaluation uh, of the Kenya currency when it went all the way to 107 but it then came down again. Uh, the price went up to 196 shillings a share when we commissioned the Dar es Salaam grinding plant and uh, once we commissioned the Tanga clinker plant uh, all the way up to 400 plus. Today it is down to 200. Let me talk about that as in, in our question and answers and, and, and why. Just want to mention the, the range of funding options that we have uh, used to grow the company. Remember the company was valued at less than $10 million in 1997 when we listed the company and the valuation of the company went all the way up to $500 million. How did we manage to grow the company and what did we use? So we started in 1994 with a private placement of $3 million uh, from friends and, and relatives. Um, we did a rights issue in 1995 of 1 million when we ran out of money to complete the, the, the 200 ton per day plant. Uh, we used some men's finance of $2 million at the time in 1996. Then we another equity raise uh, from a private equity fund. This was Acacia Fund, uh, uh, which, is, which is run by Michael Turner. Michael Turner still sits on our board um, um, at the moment. 1997, we did the IPO. At, uh, for, for five and a half million dollars. We've used commercial paper, we've used a convertible bond uh, that was to Bamburi. Uh, we've used uh, 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 equity sale. We, had an equ we set up a company in Tanzania and we sold shareholding in Tanzania uh, to raise some money. We've used uh, Exim Bank uh, project funding, listed uh, floating rate corporate bond in, in, uh, in 2005. We've done a leverage corporate acquisition. We've done uh, collateral goods management facilities. We've, we've done a lot of different types of funding. And the latest was uh, the, the uh, Quesa equity f uh, for, uh, for, uh, from Orios, a large private equity capital. We did an equity link note which, from with, which was funded by NIC. Uh, and we've repaid that bond. That was about $20 million. And the last was a $50 million raised from Africa Finance Corporation. Um, this is a convertible loan note which converts into equity in, in 2018. AFC came in with $50 million uh, and the, the conversion price that we agreed with them was 62% higher than the then ruling price because they knew and we knew that we were growing the value of the company and we would not sell equity at the then price but at a much higher price later on. Today, 2015, we are proposing a five-year uh, 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 to refinance uh, some of our short-term debt with a five-year bond uh, and we are looking very quickly early into the next, into next year, refinancing again part of our, of our, uh, of our uh, total loans that we have in the book into a seven to nine-year uh, DFI, Development Finance Institution loan. Um, so we can stretch out our, 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 our uh, loan amortizations over a longer term than what we have right now. So these are all the different methods that we have used to raise money, to fund the expansion and, and, and uh, the last two going into the market now for a new bond is again part of the continuation of the same process that we have used to raise money, to grow the, 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 the size of the company. And, and, uh, and, and, and to match long-term cash flows with long-term repayment schedules. Before I go into 
why we're expanding capacity and what is the underlying rationale and the fundamentals of the cement business in particular, two or three more charts. This is uh, historical performance share price uh, compared to the Nairobi Stock Exchange. If you, I don't know if you can see, uh, the, the blue line is, is uh, ARM cement uh, share price and the red line is the Nairobi Stock Exchange Index. Um, since 2011, the Nairobi Stock Exchange Index has remained at no, more or less zero, whereas ARM has grown uh, all the way up to 1,200%, uh, and recently it's come down to about 500. So we're still five times, five x more than if you had invested uh, in the Nairobi Stock Exchange Index. Um, this slide compares us to our peers listed on the Nairobi Stock Exchange, Bamburi Cement and East Africa Portland. I, I think uh, East Africa Portland is, is, a, is a green line and Bamburi is a red line. So again, very similar to the rest to, to NSI, NSE index. Uh, ARM has outperformed the other cement companies uh, many times, multi, many multiples, in spite of the dip that we have seen in the last few months. Next slide. So why are we growing the company and how are we creating wealth for the shareholders? This, this is a quick, quick summary of all the expansion from 60,000 tons per day in, 19, uh, in 1996 when we started the first cement plant up to 2.5, 2.6 million tons now. Every few years we have expanded capacity and uh, uh, we now have plants across East Africa. Uh, 2014, we commissioned the Tanga plant, as I mentioned to you. Next. During this time, the cement consumption in East Africa has kept growing at, at nearly 12% cumulative average growth rate, 12% year on year. We started in 1999 with, with uh, just under 2 million tons in East Africa. Today, 2015, there's a 2014 figures here, 2015, we're looking at about 15 million uh, tons uh, a year and, and uh, if you look at the consumption per capita which is a very strong measure of how much cement demand is, is, is growing in the country and what, what, uh, what the prospects are. In 1999 East Africans consumed 22 kilos per person per year. Today we are just under 100 kilos in Kenya about an average of about 90 kilos in East Africa. Now, how does that compare with the rest of the world? We consume 90 kilos per person per year. This slide, uh, a little bit, uh, uh, I think it's two years old, but still very relevant. The, the, uh, the uh, uh, horizontal index is GDP per capita, uh, uh, and the vertical index is kilograms of cement per person per year. Now, if you look at Kenya or East Africa, we are near about 100 kilos per person per year. Whereas if you look at uh, a, a, a few other countries right up on the, on the top, China uh, is nearly 600 kilos per person per year. It used to be much more, it started coming down. Mauritius is 600 kilos. Mauritius is the size of Nyanza province uh, with a population of about 1.1 million. 600 kilos per year. Algeria, Morocco, Jordan, Poland, uh, Croatia, all in 500 kilos per person per year. Um, Egypt, 550 kilos per person per year, and so on. Now, as countries roll out their infrastructure projects, uh, roads and harbors and schools and airports and so on, uh, cement consumption uh, continues growing for a long time, but it seems to be evening out around 400 kilos per person per year over a long period. So countries, developed countries like Norway, Australia, Finland, Japan, they continue using 400 kilos per person per year. So at 100 kilos per person per year in East Africa, we've still got a very long way to grow. We've got a lot of things to build. We've got roads to build. We've got our schools and hospitals and our bridges and our ports and airports and so on. And for many, many, many years to come, we will still be building a lot of homes with, with cement um, and, and concrete. So this is the rationale. I think we're in a good space. The fundamentals in East Africa continue to be very strong. Uh, and in, in the last 15 years, as the previous slide showed, we've, we've had about a 12% year-on-year growth. This year slowed down a little bit in Tanzania from about 14% to about 10 or 11%. And in Kenya, we're still running at about 9 or 10% growth rate. 
the fundamentals remain very, very strong and, and uh, uh, our capacity that we have in, in Kenya now continues to be uh, uh, fully utilized. This is the picture of the Tanga plant. We produce, this is a capacity of 4,000 tons a day of clinker. We're currently now at about 3,200, 3,300 tons per day and increasing, ramping up capacity. Every single ton that we produce is consumed. We're selling clinker to our own company in Kenya, to, uh, to our Dar plant, uh, sending clinker to our plant in Dar es Salaam, in Kigali. We are also selling clinker to our neighbors and other smaller cement companies in the region. Um, our, our plant in Dar es Salaam, we do both bulk and, uh, and bag cement here. This is a two and a half thousand uh, ton per day plant. We are almost running consistently about 2,000 tons a day uh, uh, supplies out of Dar es Salaam plant. Arthur River plant, uh, capacity of 2,000 tons per day, we're, 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 we're fully sold out at 2,000 tons per day out of this plant. And the Kaloleni plant is both cement and clinker, like the, uh, uh, we're producing uh, 1,500 tons of clinker around 1,100 tons of cement, the balance we send to our Arthur River plant, and that too, fully sold out. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a typical good day, we're selling six to 7,000 tons of cement uh, now, and, and, and this capacity has only started ramping up once our clinker plant started in, in, in Tanga a few months ago. For, for some photos of Tanga plant, we saw a movie, but these are some of the recent photographs, the quarry at Tanga. We have a very pure limestone. This is a crusher platform. Crush, the crusher house is 800 tons per hour crushing capacity of the limestone in Tanga. Uh, uh, the reason why I'm showing you some of these photographs is just to give you a size of the scale and the, the, the seriousness of the assets that we have built over the last few years. These, these are huge assets, not just for ARM. But I think they are assets for the countries uh, that we operate in. These are national assets at the end of the day. And cement plants have a lifespan of 50 to 60 years uh, and, and as you keep modernizing and improving even longer. We have limestone reserves of more than 400 years at Intanga uh, and, and this is going to be a plant that is going to be in production for a long time to come. A quick uh, summary of where our plants are located. Uh, total 8,000 tons a day of capacity and we can deliver to most project sites, uh, construction sites, within a 12 hour, if not within a 24 hour period uh, from any of our plants. Bulk or, or bagged um, and, and, and also ready mix now in both in Dar es Salaam as well as in, um, in Kenya. We've partnered with other ready mix concrete suppliers.